Right, I'm going to do a little look at um, getting new content into a level um, by kind of cheating. So there is um, for some reason not loaded the Epic Marketplace. Dun dun dun, and um, you can get lots and sods here to save time, save effort, um, props, materials, whatever. Um, but it's not a superly, superly, uh, superly. Um, I can't even use words. I'm quite tired. Recently had a baby. Not personally. That would be amazing. But um, my wife recently had a baby. Anyway, I'm tired. But let's carry on. So um, <clears throat> another place you can find stuff in the wild world is places like Turbo Squid. Um, it's one of several places. Um, it's one I go to because uh, better the devil, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I was looking for some props to fill out my Macedonia map, and I was looking at sort of outsidey, domesticy things. Um, and you know, you can search for here. I search for clothesline. Um, just a few th tips on finding stuff here. So Tur Turbo Squid's got a lot of expensive stuff, cheap stuff, um, some stuff that's really shit, and some stuff that imports really nicely. Some stuff that is crazy well set up. Um, but has about four gigabytes of textures for one little mesh. Um, so it's designed for a range of things from games through to proper sort of um, rendering and film and who knows what. So, and you have to be quite careful with looking at things. So first of all, some things are just super expensive for no obvious reason. Um, I mean, fair enough, people spent effort. I would charge lots of money for things I made this nicely, but you know, you've got your 80 quid clothesline and there you have a seven, well, yes, cartoons. So this one, £4.30, is super cheap. Um, and if you're just clicking at stuff, you think, oh, I'll use that. But the other thing is that if you uh, look at the stuff, some of the stuff is super high um, resolution. Now, I'm getting a bit more relaxed about buying um, high poly stuff because the Epic um, level of detail generator does quite a good job actually, but that is quite a jump and I would rather start looking at something a little bit more modest. Um, this one's got about 75,000 polygons, still a bit high. So here's one I found that I thought, okay, it's not great, but it's got about 24,000 polygons. Um, that will downsample a bit fairly nicely, at least by a factor of three or four without looking too rubbish probably. Um, and you take a punt on this stuff because it's all differing qualities of things. Um, uh, now I use Lightwave so I should have mentioned at the start. This is um, looking at my import pipeline through Lightwave which is not something that other people usually do. Some things will be common to other programs like Blender and whatever but um, some things will be Lightwave specific. Uh, anyway so I got this. It's a bit of potluck as to how things import. So I've unpacked it and I'm just going to open it up in here. First time I've had a go, actually I will go here. So the textures, when I looked at them, um, you think, ah, oh, well, yeah. It's not super high quality and there are some potential issues with designs, trademarks, copyright, whatever. Um, but for my community level, which probably won't be sold for any money, this is probably okay. So another thing to think about with um, Turbo Squid is you get lots of weird licenses. Royalty free um, is basically use it for whatever. Though I would question whether it should be because there was a logo on that t-shirt. So um, proceed with caution. Some stuff, especially guns, weapons, cars, branded stuff, but especially cars, has an editorial license, which is their way of saying we don't give you license at all, it's at your own risk and you should seek your own licenses with the people making these things. Um, now whether you want to still use that stuff in a community map, um, with my IP lawyer hat on I would say it's a bit iffy but I don't think my levels are ever going to come to the attention of rights holders in obscure little things that are semi-licensed. So I'm not trying to be naughty. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff about can you use a car that looks like a particular brand of car. Um, it's it's a tricky area and generally speaking it's an interesting 
issue for the big players in the industry, um, but you'll probably pass under the radar. Not a guarantee, um, that's just my call on some stuff because I want to have cars in my level that aren't stupid. Um, right, so let's have a go. Um, I've got a weird system here. Uh, close, try and close. So, I've only got the dot obj, which is not a lightwave native file, so uh, I need to just make a folder because that seems to be looking somewhere else for all the doing stupid. Now, in other news, there's a new version of lightwave apparently, which is designed for working with um, Unreal Engine. I haven't seen it. It's supposedly got new ways of doing light maps, hopefully good ways of doing light maps. Um, I'd love to try it, because I have been somewhat scathing about Lightwave's performance with uh, Unreal in various ways, especially in terms of light maps. Speaking of which, all right, that's that's just nasty. So there is no uh, light map typically in this stuff, so um, I just auto-generate one. That's um, a Lightwave classic. I will probably ask Unreal to do a light to do a light map and see what comes up, but that's not now's problem. Um, it's all in one layer, sometimes it can be lots of layers. It's basically imported okay. I don't know if it's imported at a weird scale. Let's just see, that is height 2.5 kilometers. So I think it's fair to say that is not um, imported at the right size. So just drawing across there, that's about five kilometers by three kilometers. Uh, Okay, so this may be a light wave thing or an object thing. Um, so I'm going to try a resize. There seems to be a common factor of that. Wait a minute, that's a percent, so it'll be three point. God knows. Right, so let's now see if this is a sensible size. Still not a very sensible size. I'm just going to have to do this by eye. Um, Okay, but first of all, let's get the textures working. Uh, okay, so it seems to have sort of worked, but it's a bit dark, which could be for all kinds of reasons. Uh, let's put it on textured wire. So in Lightwave, this is the surface editor. Uh, oh, right. So there's a variety of materials, some of which are not set up and they, because mm, there were a lot of different uh, textures, some of which didn't seem to work. So you have to do a bit of detective work, and here we are. Uh, so that could be anything really. What is this? There's no easy way that I found to see what to say. I want to see everything with this material. I could be missing it, but. It's just a maddening feature of Lightwave. One of many. So I don't know what that is, so I have to... <sighs> it's ridiculous. Apply that surface and then select entire surface. So it's just, it's just stupid. So it's probably not intended to have a texture because it is a... Um, Oh wait, yeah, that's the whole UV map. So it's just a straight colour kind of thing. So we want a blue thing now. Unreal won't let you do... Well, it will. So we need to know that that is just a blue plain colour. Um, and let's find out what 2 is. 2 looked interesting. So it's usually an exercise in tedium getting this stuff working. So a slightly different grey. So we've got um, kind of basic materials that are just basic colours. Um, so the difference between those, I don't know. Let's find out. So that's your basic, yeah basic uh, material. So those two are, I'm going to rename that for the sake of sanity. So that is the light grey plastic. So this will give me a few hints when I import it into Unreal. And 
let's call that mid grey plastic and that one blue plastic. So that and for some reason this one will be trousers. So unexpectedly the scale is a problem. Um, I'm going to try doing that again. I'm going to get rid of that. And let's just see what sort of size. So that is still a little big but it's the right um, factor of 10. We're getting closer. I'm just going to have to try it. And what I'm going to do probably is to import this into Unreal and then fiddle with the scaling in Unreal and then make a change back in here to reflect that because it's easier to judge the scale when you've got it in connection with other objects. Um, another thing is that it's centered there but uh, I mean what the hell placement is that? Let's put it in such a way that when you drag it on it'll sit nicely on the ground. J just get random stuff uh, like that. Can I go back to the, the light map with all these diagonals light wave fails quite hard at doing light, ma light maps for diagonals. Other stuff yep you, you're getting better there but I don't see that's going to be doable in a less than tedious way by manually realigning these and so on. So I'm going to stick with that. One other thing I can do is to do a collision for this and it's tempting because there's quite simple things. So I'm going to start doing collision uh, just to show what I might do. now do is to name these. So close line for the main layer and the collision layer is UCX underscore same thing and that will cause it to be recognized as a collision layer. So that's for now um, what I'm doing on the lightwave side. The materials are set up is the main thing. Sometimes that is a real pain in the whatevers now going on there. So I'm now going to export it as FBX, it's my usual pipeline. Here's the scale scene thing, here's where I got that number from, the 3.3, well it should have been 3.2 percentage. Um, I'll save that same place and then I'll jump into my level. Um, I'll go to my domestic materials. I've changed this as I've gone along. So I'll import the mesh. Close this line. Um, I'm not going to change this here because it'll change it for everything I import beyond that. But this is my usual setup. Here is the close line without the materials. There are these six materials at once. So a bit of housework. Going to set it to generate the light map UVs, which is generally better. I don't like all this stuff. It may be I need to see what that's going to look like at a bigger light map size. <sighs> I don't know if that's any better. Actually, that's bugged. So this is annoying. That appears to be bugged, which means I'm going to have to do the light map in Lightwave. Uh, screw you, Unreal. I don't know why it does that. It could be there's some funny business with um, the mesh. So what we've got, it's all three vertices. There's nothing obviously wrong. No points on one polygon. 
there's nothing obviously wrong with this model. Um, so something screwed up there. <coughs> All I can think of is to um, to resize the lot zero. I can sometimes fix up some things, but no, that's just it's keeping the bugs. It's just making everything else a bit less exciting. Um, <coughs> though that is something I can do. So with this super um, high poly thing, I do sometimes just drop the polys on lot zero. Normally you leave that alone. I don't think it's making things much worse. Much worse at all. Let's just. Um, no, I can't do it. comparison. So that's even fifty percent of the polys close up. So that is my close up model probably need to have the textures in to check but you know that's fine and then with this stuff you tend to have to do um, more levels of detail so first of all I uncheck the auto compute distances because that's never anything other than frustrating typically do three LODs um, LOD 1 is sort of you know from that distance make it look passable and then LOD 2 is at a far distance make it really really have very small numbers of polys uh, on this big sort of level I'm doing now that's quite important. So this is now a percent of the LOD0 number of triangles so that's 50% of 50% and at this point well nothing really looked different but it, it's not worth doing the LOD stuff without getting the textures in first because that can be affected. So I'm going to get rid of that temporarily so there's my thing I need to tediously load in lots of materials um, need to go back to my uh, thing here. So, uh, yeah, it would be nice to rename those first, but I can't be bothered. I may rename them as I go along. And I think I've got two different types of materials. Uh, yep, yeah, that's fine. Um, Actually, I'm just going to put CL underscore just to... Oh god, why didn't I do that first? Just to get them in the same place, to avoid going completely mad. Uh, so two kinds of materials, one is plasticky and one is clothesy. I think I'm going to just divide them into those two materials and use material instances to keep things, again, relatively sane. There's a bit of leg work, forgive the pun. Um, just getting that in, I think I've got most of them. Socks is the last thing. Very exciting. I mean, I don't know why I don't get more subscribers than people playing games. This is extremely exciting. Edge of the seat stuff. Okay. Uh, <sighs> Well, maybe that's the third type of material. So let's um, close line. Ah, okay. I'll have a naming convention, which I'm now doing. Okay, so I'm going to change that for a parameter. Uh, base color text. I'm just going to copy that to that. So this is the master material but it's also a regular material I can use so I don't have an extra material knocking about I don't really want. Um, just I tend to use scalar parameters rather than constants just for convenience and uh, there's no um, no cost to it as far as I know, it just makes everything easier and you can tweak things dynamically. So I want this to be fairly rough. That's probably, I mean it really, it clothes are pretty pretty rough I think in terms of material qualities. The normal I've got, so I'm just going to copy this parameter, call it normal text and stick that there, but oh. That's what I want. I don't know what I'm doing here. And that's our clothes texture. 
uh, which is fine. Other stuff you can mess with, but that's basically fine. So I'm now going to, I guess, stop plugging that into. Um, the mesh, which I seem to have misplaced again. Clothesline. Let's put it there. So find socks. Oops, I need to find socks. And we should start seeing stuff appearing. So in game it looks better. Not brilliant, but better. Um, and let's do a time lapse while I sort that out for other things. Just going to create a material instance and call it trousers and so on. And then go to load that and override those with the right values, which will be up here. Trousers and trousers normal. Don't need to mess with the roughness. So that is another clothes texture I can slot into here. And so on. So let's go time lapse. Pew. Okay, just to cut in here, I am making the plastic material, which is just a straight, um, plain colour. Uh, the roughness, I'm actually using this noise sample um, to interpolate between two roughnesses, minimum, maximum. So the roughness between 0.1 and 0.4, it's not perfect, but it basically gives you this slightly um, varying roughness. So you've got a fairly shiny plastic, but it's not a perfect uh, material. It's got a bit of detail to it. Um, given how small the bits are in the mesh, that's overkill, but there we go. And then I can create instances of this for the darker grey and the blue, which I'll now do. Okay, so that could probably go down a shade or two, but we're basically there. Um, yeah, so there is the clothes mesh. Going to start doing the lots again. So let's just compare that to the original mesh. really no discernible difference. I could even go more economical with that. Um, but so around there I reckon I can transition to a much lower um, detail model. So I'm going to say screen size 0.5, go to LOD 1 and that's 50% triangles. So that's well basically take it down see when it starts looking crap. Again, no obvious difference. I'm um, going to go zoomed in and see the difference. You're hard pressed to see any difference. So I think I can take that down even further. So 20%. At some point it all starts falling apart, but that point is not yet. Alright, so this is the nasty Lord 1, but it's definitely workable. There's a few issues with it. So that bolt there is completely degenerated, but at this distance, can you tell the difference? Just about, because you can see the textures now changing. So that was a little bit aggressive. 
let's try 20. So it's just seeing how things change. You can make a small make out a small difference, but um, I'd say that's fine. If we do an auto lod, can you see a big change as you move in and out? I mean, the answer is basically no. And that's going. Oh, hang on. What screen size did I say that was? Uh, all right. So it's going to that straight away. Let's just put that temporarily. So I use the Lord Auto just to see if you can spot the difference. So that's going from 16,000 to 3,000 polygons and no difference. But if you go up close you can see a nice amount of detail. Um, and LOD2 is basically if I'm looking at this from way away and point 0.1 is about the right size so let's try a super aggressive reduction to 5% of 50% of the triangles. It's actually still a lot more than I was wanting but um, I'm going to go more aggressive to 2%. Right, that now just fails. 3% still fails. So I think 5% might be our limit. So that's got some detail back. Wow, it's a bit special. Um, because those big areas of texture change, that's not good enough. So 5% it is. But that is going to be so go from 0 to 2. That's going to be fine for something around there. And even if there's a bit of movement, that's fine. So this big thing that started out 25,000 polygons, or was it how many it was? It's now down to less than a thousand. That's fine as part of a big scene. So that's done. The light map size, well, it's not working. So until I've done a new light map, oh, okay, that's the light map for lot two. That's the more problematic one. Interesting how that's got rid of that. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. That is squished out for some reason but it might still work who knows so um, oh, it's hard to know I'm gonna say well, let's just see what happens there if we drop it down further well that's kind of cured some stuff so I might try a light map 32 which is a little bit aggressive but it depends how you're lighting it if it's got a stationary light sunlight on most of it um, all right so I've set up the LODs I've set up the materials, um, I might have to revisit the light map, I've done the collision, or at least I can finish the collision soon. Uh, my textures have gone funny, why have my textures gone funny? Uh, there's some issue with my landscape textures, are they caching, what's going on there? Uh, that's like half the usual resolution, oh, what's going on, anyway so you can drag it on and it basically works but it is too big so I will have to find something like a door to compare it to oh, that's a bit iffy so yeah that is undoubtedly too big but let's try 0.3 that's too small uh, I mean how big a trouser is going to be not that big let's try 0.4 so I'm just Seeing how we go, how big are socks? Maybe that big. It's not a bad place to start, maybe 0 0.55, 0 0.45 rather. Some things are a little bit exaggerated in size, uh, just so they're more noticeable. So I think I'm done. So I'm now going to go back to my model and resize it to 45% in all directions. Um, I'm going to leave the light map for now, see how that compiles. I might put it in a test map uh, so I can regenerate the lighting quickly and then feed that back and then 
get it back into the main level. So I'm now going to reload, re-import that. Da -da 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 -da. And then reset the sizing because it will be wee. Whoops. And so that is a, an asset from TurboSquid uh, into Unreal. That's how I do that. So apologies if that's a bit slow in parts. Um, but there you go. Bye bye.